Hi everyone, Dr. Simon Fry, consultant in clinical neurophysiology, back with the channel. In this video, I want to talk about a couple of points around nitrous oxide toxicity. I want the central message of this being that history is absolutely key because knowing that a patient has been using this stuff prior to their admission is actually most of the battle because the treatment is actually really simple and very straightforward to give and the various investigations are generally quite straightforward. Um, I'm gonna put a link below to the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. Um, they've got a special document about this, what the features are, um, what the blood tests you need to requests are, the B12s, the um, MMA levels, homocysteine levels, and so on, and the treatment uh, regimen as well. All really good stuff, but the key thing here is getting the history. Now, the history is often quite difficult to get from patients because obviously, you know, they're quite embarrassed about the situation that they're in. Uh, it can be quite difficult for them to share that. Um, maybe all sorts of social uh, pressures in the background, particularly around their parents and so forth, that they've been using this. And especially now that there's been a change in the law that it is now illegal to use this recreationally, this can be increasingly challenging and difficult. But it's really important to be able to help your patients feel comfortable sharing this with you and encouraging them to do so because if we can get them the treatment ASAP, then hopefully their outcomes can be better and their recovery can be faster um, too. So really it's about encouraging your patients to share their history of nitrous oxide use. Clinically, there can be some interesting pointers as well because um, let's just take perhaps one of the most important differentials of nitrous oxide use, which is Guillain-Barre syndrome. So the thing that drives patients into hospital is usually weakness in the legs. Um, it can often be quite a rapid process and patients can not only be weak in the legs, but also find it difficult to coordinate their movements, particularly around the thighs. That can reflect either problems with the peripheral nerves or with the spinal cord. Um, and that's the thing that's really getting patients into hospital. So the thing that we are often asked as neurophysiologists to look for is evidence of Guillain-Barre syndrome. The electrics of Guillain-Barre and the electrics of, of um, nitrous oxide toxicity are different, but ultimately um, it's the history which is key. I think one of the important th things that I've seen in my series of patients um, has been motor axonal loss um, in the legs. That's quite different to uh, Guillain-Barre. But um, you know, if you get the history, you get the history right, um, it's gonna make life a lot easier. There's another aspect as well, which is what the patients look like. And this is another clinical point I just want to share with you uh, quite specifically. Patients who've got Guillain-Barre syndrome are going to be looking systemically unwell. Inflammatory systems are, are going off. The peripheral nerves are being attacked um, by the immune system. And patients are gonna look systemically unwell especially if the autonomic system has been activated uh, and you've got um, you know, flushing of the skin, uh, tachycardia, sweating, those kind of things, patients are gonna look sick. Interestingly, it's quite different with patients who have got nitrous oxide toxicity. Usually they're going to look, actually look quite well. However, um, they are going to look quite um, irritable, uh, disengaged usually, often they're on their mobile phone the whole time, taking calls from other people. Maybe that's just me, I don't know. Um, but often they just sort of look a little bit irritated to be in hospital and, and in that position. And so therefore they're quite different looking to the systemically unwell patient with Guillain-Barre syndrome. They'll actually look well, but just essentially cheesed off that they're there and that they can't move around. Now I used to think uh, perhaps that it was just to do with their situation, they're a young person, they're frustrated, but there's increasing evidence as well now that there are neuropsychiatric um, effects of nitrous oxide um, which may affect people's mood, uh, can create anxiety, depression, and so forth. And so perhaps uh, it may reflect what's going on in the central nervous system as well as, a, as an effect of this nitrous oxide toxicity. But ultimately, you know, the, the key thing is, is getting a patient to feel comfortable with you, sharing that history with you, and then you, then you can crack on and get the uh, right treatment for them. So I'm gonna put a link below uh, from the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, um, all the different things you should be looking out for, and perhaps some of the red flags as well, which may point you in slightly different directions as well. And I hope that's been helpful and keep well. All the very best.